Hi, my name is Mr. Kavner. I am the Head of Psychology and the Assistant Director of Post-16 at Butehaven. And I'm going to be talking to you about the psychology course that we offer at A-Level uh, at Butehaven Sixth Form. So what is psychology about? Psychology is, put very simply, the study of the mind and human behaviour, which basically is one of the most vague things I've ever heard. Um, what's it actually really about? It is really about understanding people, why they do the things that they do, sometimes why they act in ways that we can't really justify uh, at times, and sometimes why they might be having a hard time, and sometimes how they can do some fairly incredible things um, with just quite a limited range of uh, equipment available to them. What, what is it that makes people people? What is it that makes um, us tick? That is what psychology is all about. Okay, It's quite a bit more than just mental health stuff as well, as I want to show you here. Okay, So the course content for A-Level um, is um, actually covering 11 different areas. So we start off with social influence, which we'll go into a bit more in a moment. Uh, then we hit memory, which is always useful for students to understand. Uh, then we look at attachment, so early relationships, and what that has um, effect-wide on people's later uh, development. Then we do do a little bit of psychopathology, so in that we cover um, OCD, um, depression and uh, phobias which is quite a useful sort of chance to gain an insight into um, how psychologists think about different ways and different problems people have but also different ways of treating and supporting people. We then also uh, move on to look at the different approaches um, and that really works uh, quite well following on from that psychopathology. Um, and we then have biopsychology, uh, an area which actually students are really seem to get into quite a lot because actually that leads on to a career in neuropsychology or neuroscience or cognitive neuroscience. And we've actually sent about three students off in the last couple of years to study exclusively that part. So there's, there's clearly something about biopsychology that's really sort of getting their attention. But we also do research methods, which gives us a chance to see how psychology kind of works. Um, to understand the processes, to carry out some research, which students often quite enjoy, um, as well as generally being kind of interwoven throughout the rest of the course. Research methods in, is kind of tested in that unit too. Um, we then have our issues and debates, and that is in our unit three exam. Um, and that covers a wide range of things from the free will determinism to nature nurture to whether we have a, uh, a need for research to be culturally aware when it comes to being conducted and, and can we conduct research from outside of our own culture is that right um, so yeah, we have, have a look at those, um, and that's in the issues and debates. So that's quite useful. Um, and then we go on to the last three, uh, what we refer to as optional topics um, of relationships, schizophrenia, and forensic psychology, um, all of which have proved firm favourites with the students over the years. Um, but ironically, people tend to actually love the thought of forensic psychology. But by the time they finish the course, their biggest favourite is normally relationships. Um, so, yeah. But how, how is it um, tested? So, let's have a look. So, A-level psychology. A-level psychology um, has this structure in the fact that, actually, we do three full exams at the end of the course. So, it is a two-year course um, in which you complete within that two year study um, and then you give yourself that chance to have a go at exams at the end of the course. So you get the full two years to kind of develop your abilities and understanding before doing the exam at the end. Uh, at the end, the exams include a mixture of multiple choice questions, some short answer questions, 
as well as some essay questions. However, throughout the course, we take time to support and develop your style and your ability in that. So it's not normally an issue by the time you get there. Uh, what do you start shooting to say about it? Uh, let's, let's hear from Alex and Bodhi and see what they think. Hi, I'm Alex. I do psychology at Bute Haven and I really enjoy it and I've decided to do it at university. Um, I really enjoy mental health and learning about that uh, because it affects everyone really and, um, and psychology is all around us so it's just really interesting to learn about. Hi, I'm Bodhi and uh, I study psychology at Butte Haven and I've enjoyed it so much that I'm actually going to go and study it at uni. I've uh, particularly enjoyed the biopsychology uh, unit because I do uh, biology A level as well and I really like social influence as I just, it just really interested me. Thank you Alex, thank you Bodhi. Um, let's have a quick bit of a closer look at some of the topics in psychology. Um, well what we see is that social influence is the first one you kind of come into um, and so it starts off looking at some different um, elements of why we conform, um, looking at um, this thing of norms of social influence and uh, informational social influence can, and how that kind of shapes what we do a lot of the time um, as we go through. We also then move on to look at um, the famous Zimbardo's prison study and that effect on of conformity to social roles and how things went quite dark quite quickly with that study. Um, then we're moving on to try and understand more why people obey or what why people uh, refuse to obey sometimes uh, and this comes from out of kind of that legacy of the second world war where we try to understand sort of concentration camps you know they were staffed by people who were normal people originally um, and they kind of get put into a situation where they do some despicable acts so, but how 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 did they go from being people that were doing that to not well Milgram in his research he tries to find out a little bit about that so we'll cover that in just a moment um, but we also look at dispositional explanations is it to do with their personality um, why they do things we also look at um, explanations that are more based upon the situation so social support or, or the locus of control um, being an interesting sort of complex is it that internal or is it that external element and finally, we look at things like minority influence um, and the process of social change. So this year, my students have done a variety of presentations um, and some of them have done a presentation on the Black Lives Matter campaign uh, in which they point out how it actually has been going for about 10, 15 years uh, prior to this last year. Although in this last year it's, it's gone big, um, actually it's something which has taken time like a lot of campaigns um, and we say so we look at that we still look at that process of social change and that happens okay so that's just like literally our first unit and, and students really often tend to really enjoy that one I'm gonna give you a little bit of an insight into this um, I'm gonna ask you a question I want you to think about this okay would you give a stranger a fatal electric shock just because you're told to. Okay, you're not in the room this year, but normally I you know, get people to put their hands up and go, for, no, 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 seriously, no, it never would. Um, and also, how, you know, out of 100 people, how many do you reckon would do it? Yeah? Would you reckon, what, 50? 10? 1? How many people do you reckon would do that? Well, Milgram actually did that we can see the setup he has um, there on the side um, and he actually found that despite thinking that less than 2% would he found quite amazingly that actually 65% of Americans would I know shocking isn't it um, so 
it might be a good idea to stay kind of you know in lockdown and stay in the UK uh, for a little while longer. Um, otherwise, you might have a bit of a shocking experience over in uh, in America. Um, sorry, my jokes are terrible and infamous. And yes, if you do the course, you are going to have to put up with them. So sorry about that. But you know, some some people like my shocking jokes. Okay. Um, what do you need? What do you need to get in and do psychology? Um, psychology is a hard uh, subject. However, the simple fact is you guys haven't um, done it before. So looking at how students tend to go on and succeed, uh, and who tend to struggle, um, we've got this criteria here. So first of all, you need a positive and quite a strong work ethic. It's not a subject which you'll just be able to do just in lessons. Okay, I don't really know of many A-levels that really uh, are that. So if you're doing, thinking you're doing A-levels, then you know what, you do need a strong work ethic. Um, but in order to gain the minimum level of requirements, we look for a five in English. Now this is due to the fact that in the course we have a significant amount of writing which is present within it. We also have a significant amount of reading which is present with it. For instance, I expect you to actually read a couple of books on uh, psychology outside of the lesson as well. And that's the sort of thing which you might find quite difficult if you don't have reasonable English skills. Then we also look for a five in maths because there is a significant mathematical element to the course. Now, I'm not asking you to be the world's great trigonometry calculator, but what I'm needing you to be able to do is understand what a graph is um, and you know, do your basic uh, mathematical uh, calculations. Um, recognise things like decimals, ratios, all that sort of stuff, um, so that you actually have a, a fair chance to engage with a lot of the content which is on the uh, exam spec. And finally, science. Um, I, I asked for a five in science due to the kind of the scientific, theoretical application nature of the course. After all, we are a science. However, I put a little caveat on that. What I'm actually asking for, what I'm really wanting is a good biology grade okay because as i've already mentioned biology comes up quite a bit in um, this and that's it's quite relevant uh, to the course um, and so if you're okay at biology then you probably uh, be able to do okay um, in psychology if chemistry and physics isn't your greatest strength then don't worry too much about that but certainly a five in biology or a five overall in science is what I'm what I'm looking for to make sure that you're kind of going to go on and do well. Psychology is a fantastic subject. I love teaching it. I am really passionate about it. Um, and it's really quite exciting because, you know, you guys haven't really studied it properly before. Um, so it means that you tend to learn something new every lesson. But that also makes it quite hard because every lesson you get something completely new. Yeah. You're learning new information. That gives you a lot of stuff to learn, a lot of stuff to remember, because if you remember, the exam is at the end of the uh, course, yeah? So there's a lot of stuff to remember and recall, and it's not always an easy uh, subject, to say the least. Um, so I want to kind of make you aware of the fact that actually, psychology is quite a hard subject. But to me, and certainly for the students who go through the course, hard doesn't mean bad. Hard means worth working for. So if you're up for working hard and learning some fantastic insights into human behaviour, then psychology is probably the one for you. But what's it good for? What, what do you get out of it? Um, well, at the end, uh, simply put, psychology can be useful anywhere that there's people. Okay, so... The example I like to give is, right, let's send an astronaut to Mars, okay? So he's going to be on his own. He's going to be on his own for a couple of years. Um, only one person, only one person involved. Well, how to keep him sane? How do we keep him from cracking up and having an emotional, mental um, breakdown after just a couple of hours? You know what? You need some really good psychologists working there to make that happen. And that's kind of the, the most extreme situation where I can think about the most limited people. Well, 
And that means that basically everywhere else, you're always going to have people involved. So from doing um, conflict prevention or resolution, uh, going into sort of marketing or research, uh, into product design, into development of different um, packages and that, ultimately it's all about people and thinking about how the people will engage with it. Um, that's always useful. We also have you know working with other people. So it might be um, anywhere from looking at something like mental health, you know, mental health care, um, and looking after people there and counselling, um, through to research psychology, um, and that's actually really a big and very interesting area to go into. As you go through the course, you realise just how wide it is. I teach you some areas, but it's like a like a taster of all the different areas in psychology, which as you develop, you kind of start learning things. Oh, you know what? That that's something I really would be interested in. It's not unusual for students to pick up a uh, copy of the A2 textbook and actually read through some of the other stuff which we don't technically need to cover um, simply out of interest because it's an interesting subject. Um, let's hear from uh, another student then, shall we? Uh, I think I've got Beth here. I'm a year 13 student studying psychology at the UJ for sixth form. I decided to choose it in year 11 because I thought it looked really interesting studying the science of the brain. I did triple science in year 11 um, and I wanted to delve further into some of the elements of it and two years on I never looked back. Um, what I really like about psychology is the fact that there is a website made so if you miss a lesson or if you want some extra like revision, revision resources um, it's really good for that and there's like no real excuse for you to like not have any revision resources on you at any point. So yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks Beth. Uh, I better mention that actually. Um, the website, yeah. Uh, in psychology I run a website, have done for about six, seven years um, and it's got all of the resources that you need as a student right from the get-go. Um, my students tend to love this over time because it it just makes your life so much easier uh, and it, it gives you so much more um, information and so many more resources than even I can remember that I have that I've made or that I've um, tracked down for you. So I mean if you look down there you've got anything from the 16 markers, so I've got examples there to um, study support sessions so you know a plan for anyone's which if they're not doing so well I try and put in some support there uh, I've got the psychology book report for which is my um, year 12 to the year 13 transition project we also tend to send students over to Auschwitz Birkenau to have a look there and that's always interesting um, we've got some year 11 prep work which if you decide to take um, this I would I'll recommend you have a go at because it's quite interesting gets you going um, but then also it goes down into Things like you know, knowledge organisers, exam papers, revision aids, um, onto the information about the different units we've got um, there, which in those unit one, two, and three actually contains all the different uh, PowerPoints for all the lessons, along with all the handouts as well. So you know what? You're in pretty safe hands. You've got a lot of stuff there for you. And if you need some financial advice on that, I've always some, also got like a money project thing there, which gives students a bit of a advice about how to do well with their money as well at A level. So um, that's just the extra bits on the website, um, not to mention the inspiration, which is a huge section too. Uh, so yeah, other details. Um, top tip, uh, I would say check out the specification. Uh, most places do offer AQA psychology. Uh, it is the most popular. And we do the A level, the full A level at um, Bude Haven. That's our thing. Um, so you can check that out at the AQA.org uh, um, and that will give you information about the credibility of that. Uh, also, as I, I just went through, you got information about my website um, and you can go through and look at some of those prep tasks. Um, and if you want to actually go on the website there, I say it's really easy to find. You just type into Google psychology imbued uh, that's a nice little um, thing I found out recently <laughs> that you can find it just by typing psychology imbued any questions email me on richard.kavanagh at budehaven.cornwall sch.uk
okay um, however I am often around um, obviously during this year um, it might be harder to find me so you might want to drop me an email arrange to um, meet me uh, in the hall and I can go through things there if you want to ask, ask any questions um, but if you're a parent and you want to have a chat uh, about those things again just drop me an email and I'll happily talk you through some different uh, bits and pieces as soon as I get a chance probably email you back in the uh, evening um, as I'm also the assistant director of Pro16 I tend to have quite a lot of stuff which I'm doing um, so I'll probably try and get back to you in the evening at that point um, if you like the look of this or any other subjects um, I do strongly recommend you sign up to those taster sessions um, and try them out okay because that's what it's all about yeah uh, in January we've got those taster sessions sign up get that application in um, and you'll get a chance to come along and see a little bit of what it's like to study psychology okay I hope you had a um, informative time here anyway um, and any questions give me a shout thank you very much for listening and thank you very much to my uh, current year 13s who have also chipped in there for us thank you take care